Hey everybody, what's up? Larry from the Movie Cranks here today. Do me a favor, if you haven't already done it, hit that subscribe button, it's right over there, especially if you like this video and want to see more content like it. But today I'm reviewing for you Tales from the Loop. It's an Amazon original series based on Simon Stallenberg's artwork and the Tales from the Loop role-playing game from the 80s created by Nathaniel Halpern that stars Daniel Zalgerty, Rebecca Hall, Paul Schneider, and Duncan Joyner, with a list of directors, one even including Jodie Foster. An eight-episode light anthology sci-fi story based in the town of Mercer, a town with a mysterious industrial underground corporation called The Loop that contains a spherical object made of some sort of black alloy of unknown origin called The Eclipse, a town where everything that can happen will happen. You will see here sights that, well, you'd say were impossible. And yet, there they are. So what did I think of Tales from the Loop? Well, to tell you the truth, I still really haven't decided. I really don't know yet. I literally just finished watching seven hours straight of it. So I'm going to go ahead and walk this one through with you guys, and I'm going to make my decision right at the end of this review because Tales from the Loop is one of those shows. I think viewers are, for the most part, going to be really split. You're going to have this segment of old-school Alfred Hitchcock sci-fi fans that are going to love this. It revolves around the whole human situation with highly metaphorical themes of time, aging, life, and death. Or you're going to hate it because there's never any clear-cut answers given as to why all this happens here in this small town and sure, I really don't need answers just quite yet. There's plenty of time for that. This is a series. But by the way Tales from the Loop ends, I personally felt this chapter of the story has been closed. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong in this thinking. But if it is, it ends now with no firm understanding of what happened, except the Eclipse did it. And to me, that's just not enough. So let me try to explain this. It starts with a young girl Loretta played by Abby Ryder Forston whose mother works at the loop. One night Loretta witnesses her mother experimenting with some sort of unknown technology that she's secretly taken from the loop. The following day when she returns home she finds that not just her mother but her entire house has disappeared except for a mysterious rock. This is when she meets Cole a young boy who takes the lost Loretta back to his family's home. When Cole's mother meets the girl, we find out right there they're one and the same. A younger and older, apparently in some sort of time loop that repeats itself. The older Loretta is married now with kids, so yes, this young girl is actually Cole's mother. And that's where this series starts. Everything, for the most part, revolves around this family and the weird things that happen to them and the others within this town, it's all connected. There's a Freaky Friday episode, an episode in which time stops completely, another that explores alternate universes where you meet yourself, and one that I can only really describe to you as a Flight of the Navigator episode. It's the best way I can explain it. But first, let's talk about some of the things that I actually did like. The cinematography and the CGI effects mixed here are like artwork. The overall theme is visually stunning, much like Simon Stahlberg envisioned in his vivid art years ago. It's old, mixed with new, and even futuristic, much like the world, the best way I can explain it, of Fallout. A 1980s feel with the 1940s, 50s, and 60s mixed in like the music and the radios and the cars and then throwing in a pinch of 2050 where there's high-tech robots and AI. There's even a scene I noticed in an elevator where they have security cameras that are like nowadays. Leading me to think now more than ever, I think we could use a Fallout series. The kind of sci-fi for myself I would personally enjoy much more than what we got here. I know, nuclear explosions, laser guns, oh my, little kid sci-fi, but I'm a nerd and it's what I like. The acting here, if I'm going to talk about it, was actually pretty great. Duncan Joyner, who plays Cole, was an unexpected delight from a relative newcomer I've never even heard of. Plus Rebecca Hall and Paul Schneider topped it off 
with eerily well-driven performances that add a dysfunctionality to this odd family who just a blink of an eye ago were just a completely normal middle-class family living out their lives. Even the episodes not revolving around this family here were actually portrayed very well. Episode 3, Stasis, with Kristen Park and Danny Kang. The writing, what there was actually of it, which is something I'm going to have to get into in a little bit. Like I said, though, it's a light anthology. And in most cases, with an anthology series, it was mostly up and down, episode to episode, some giving you much better stories than others. I really enjoyed the first two episodes. The third was okay. And then they had three straight that I just found sluggish, depressing, and boring, with heavy overtones that just bring you down. After that, we had the final conclusion, which, like I said, seemed to give us a conclusion with no answers, except the Eclipse did it. Or there's even some moments here, like he walks across a creek when it's frozen, then he walks across it when it's not frozen. It leads to something, and it just makes you think, maybe you should have just told your kids about this. You know, don't go that way. It's just stuff that I really didn't quite understand. And now, personally, I'm not asking for answers. Like I said, this series is one of those that it will come over time. But some clues or hints would have been really great. In place of those, we just got artsy metaphors, like an egg breaking in reverse. And I hate metaphors. I really do. But to go in further to the story, what I just said about this and my biggest problem I had with this series was the lack of writing and dialogue. It's something you're going to see immediately upon starting any of these episodes. It seems that this show had so much potential for in-depth storytelling and the short narratives they did put together were actually quite nice. But there's too many characters. You have the central family for the most part that the story surrounds, but then every couple episodes, they spill off into these random episodes, spending way too much time trying to develop irrelevant characters to the main plotline. Episodes that could have been spent exploring the universe they created maybe giving us some hints and clues like I alluded to earlier. It lacked what I thought could have been so much more. We could have had so much deeper stories and we could have delved into this mystery so much more, maybe with local law enforcement, or maybe explain how it is everyone in this town is just so accepting and so easy to believe everything going on around them without questioning it. Hours of narrative the series completely ignores. Instead, they put together these eight very short stories, and I guess they didn't really realize when they were writing this that they only had about a half hour of actual content that they needed to stretch out into 60-minute episodes. And how they do that, it's slow burn dialogue stretched out, and then you get another three minutes of lethargic music which seems to be the same dull track on repeat, making the show very stagnant and very slow. Like I said, you will see it almost immediately upon starting any of these episodes. They all start the same way. Two to three minutes in which no character speaks a word of dialogue, just depressing sad faces, and that monotonous track. And that was my biggest issue here. For most part, I can't say I didn't enjoy the idea. And the performances here, the actors, this is them at the top of their game. But with Quibi coming out soon, this probably would have been better off there because these are really small short stories and they could have just had a better platform there, I think. Or they could have taken a cue from Disney and just made them 30 minutes. I just don't get why they chose this route here. They coupled with this, the stale, lifeless musical score, I've reached my conclusion. If you like old Hitchcock sci-fi, if you like movies and TV shows that are more driven on mood and atmosphere and the human situation over guns and fun, I think I could recommend this show. If you like fast-paced sci-fi with spaceships, laser guns, and big towering effects like me personally, I think you're mostly going to be bored. This one, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a score. So I'm going to go ahead and give Tales from the Loop a C+. And one more thing. Just before I go here and I head out, 
Some of you see in these trailers and hearing reviewers compare this to Stranger Things, which it is not even on par in any world with Stranger Things. But you may think this is another children's show. I'm going to give you a warning right now. This is not a children's show. It deals with things you may not want to expose your kids to yet. Sexuality. Death. There's even three to four sex scenes. One behind curtains, which isn't that bad. It's grunting and heavy breathing. One very PG-13 one, which is in the middle of a street, which I'm probably pretty okay with on that one too. But then there's another one that's not quite so PG with nudity. Now, all of this will probably be a non-issue. As I can't really see kids, they're going to probably sit through 10 minutes of this, and then they're going to be bored senseless, and they're going to walk away. But if they don't, just keep in mind, you're probably going to want to keep that remote handy, or just avoid episodes 3 and 6 altogether. Anyways, guys, that's all I really got to say for now. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. But anyways, guys, I'm out, so see you later. A C plus.